Okay. I slept in, so sue me. I've been told you can do that on your first day of vacation. Um, this is day one of the East Coast American Revolutionary History Tour that I kind of threw together a few weeks ago. Um, and today, we are in my old stomping grounds. We are in the Capital District of New York State. And I kind of shorthand that I'm from Albany, but as you'll see, I'm not directly from Albany, but I am from an area of New York State that is rich with American Revolutionary history. So I will show you a few things as we go along, but first I should probably get out of bed. Head south on Burning Bush Boulevard toward Thunderbird Drive. Oh, but first packing. feet, turn left onto Usher's Road. We're in the Capital District. Where do we need to stop for breakfast? For Cat. Stewart's. So now we can actually go to the battlefield because we have acquired the vitals, the vital necessities of life from Stewart's shop, which wasn't just my food, it's also gas because that is also needed for traveling. So when I tell my New York City friends that I'm from upstate New York, I can count on getting one response from them. Yonkers? No friends, not Yonkers. I'm from the Albany area, the Capital District, the 518. The squirrel. Okay, it's not quite true that we have more cows than people, but we do have more Revolutionary War sites than you can shake a stick at. And that's why I've decided to start my history tour pretty much in my own backyard, at the Saratoga Battlefield. But why does Saratoga matter? It's 1777, two years since fighting broke out in the colonies and a little over a year since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. General George Washington has been struggling along down in New York City, suffering some rather catastrophic defeats, so bad in fact that he has to retreat to New Jersey. Um, all is not completely lost since he does manage to, I don't know, sail across the Delaware River on Christmas and completely shock the heck out of the Hessian stationed in Trenton. Um, but truth be told, that's more of a morale boosting victory for the Continental Army than an actual convincing military defeat. So we're still looking for something to make the rest of the world notice our revolution. Meanwhile, British General John Burgoyne has been hatching a plan that would effectively chop off New England from the rest of the colonies. The plan is to sail down from Canada, down Lake Champlain, march his troops, down to the Hudson River, at which point they would continue to sail on to New York City, all along the way, leaving troops and fortifying forts and whatever, so we've created a wall that, yes, cuts off New England from the rest of the colonies. And it starts out pretty well for Burgoyne. Um, in fact, Fort Ticonderoga is taken the summer of 1707 with relative ease, but that's when things get complicated for him. You know what crosses my mind as I'm driving this back? Uh, Burgoyne. General Burgoyne and his parade of, as I called it, before we start rolling, this parade of douchery, but his big fancy pants parade that he took from Fort Ty down upstate New York, assuming, I don't know, maybe there'd be a road like this, but what's actually off to the left here is much more what he and his men ran into, dense forest. And by parade of douchery, I mean they brought their kids, they brought their wives, they brought tents of food and, like, they invited, like, the family picnic to an invasion. <laughs> so, having exhausted his troops, cutting through mile after mile after mile of dense woodland, with an entire wagon train of family in tow, <clears throat> Burgoyne decides to invade Bennington. He's told the countryside is filled with loyalists, but he's wrong. Instead, he runs headlong into extremely hostile colonists. The British, particularly their Hessian mercenaries, suffer heavy losses and retreat, Yay! attempting to continue on course to Saratoga, which is where he collides with General Horatio Gates and General Benedict Arnold. Yep, that one. And from there, the battles of Saratoga began. 
Now, all the back and forth of each battle is important, it's deeply fascinating, but um, it's also way more than I can cover in a 10 minute segment. Uh, fortunately for you, there are dozens of books out there on the revolution, so go have at thee. The important thing is, Saratoga matters because we stopped the British from chopping colonial America in half, no small feat. Uh, we completely humiliated General Burgoyne, which sent a very strong message to England and the rest of the world that we were serious about this. Now, Upstate loves to say that we saved the Revolutionary War, and without us there would be no United States today, and I guess we're entitled to a little bit of hyperbole here, but, um, you know, what is true is that after Saratoga, our minister to France, a fellow by the name of Benjamin Franklin, was able to use our victory as concrete evidence that we could win the war. And from there, Franklin secured a strong alliance with the French, not to mention military aid, which would top 13 billion, that's in today's money, by the end of the war. Now, the great thing about touring old American historical sites is the visitor interactive experience, which has only gotten better and better since I was a kid. And I'm gonna show you now a little bit of what's inside the museum. I do love all the historic pictures. First, hi guys, 1776. My favorite John Trumbull painting, which Adam referred to as a shin piece. Look at everybody's fine, fancy legs. No one was ever together in the room. And that's what Adam's hated about that, among other things. That is Kasuko, who I believe looks a whole lot like a lady. But that might just be me. Nice rouge. Then, of course, there's my favorite, the surrender of General Burgoyne in Saratoga, or as I've captioned this photo, to the victory goes the hip-hop. I wasn't actually there. And, of course, after the victory at Saratoga, we had, you know, enough cred to go back to France and be like, we can win things. So, as I refer to this painting as, Franklin can't reach his shoes. But that's okay, the king's gonna give us money anyway. That way we can maybe help Franklin learn how to stretch his hamstrings. So yeah, clearly you can spend your whole day at just the Saratoga battlefield. But we're in revolutionary drenched New England here, so there's definitely more to see. Frankly, as a kid, I remember thinking that I couldn't walk two feet without smacking my head on one of those blue, on this site, historic places plaques. Anyway, after that, my husband and I went over to historic Schuylerville, home of Revolutionary War General Philip Schuyler, as well as the Saratoga Battles Monument, which offers some of the best views in the area. Just watch your acrophobia. You'll be about 150 feet up in the air at the top of the monument after almost 190 steps. Then, to round out the day, we headed south on the New York State Thruway. After a brief pause for refreshment. Because your kiss, your kiss is on my list. And arrived at the Schuyler Mansion in the heart of downtown Albany. Where I had quite an experience on our guided tour. So I feel like a big nerd doing this, but Packy, you can also kind of talk to me while you're shooting it, I guess. Um, we just finished our walking tour of the Schuyler Mansion, and we were having this conversation in the car, and I stopped, and I went, no, you know what, I want to I wanna put this on camera, uh, because I was supremely moved and uh, very surprised. I texted Juliana about this, but I want to share it with our viewers. Um, our tour group, which was about, what, 10 people? Yeah. Yeah. Um, first of all, comprised of... No one, save for my lovely husband, who is older than about mm, 25. Well, okay, me too, I'm more that look I'm sharing. But uh, we had a very young tour group uh, comprised of African American, Asian American, Latina, like the fact that this was a young, interested, and they weren't like rolly eyed and walking around with their older grandparents or their parents, like... They came of their own accord. Yeah, and I'm, you know, we can say it hashtag the Hamilton effect, but whatever causes it, I don't care. That's fantastic. Our first tour this morning at the Philip Schuyler house was much more in line with what I remember as a kid, with being there with a bunch of retirees and everybody's you know, very studiously talking like what they read in their American history textbook. This was alive, this was we're paraphrasing and talking kind of in modern parlance about these things that were going on. It was just, it was so very cool. So, Hamilton effect, 
I know there are some people who get like, oh God, it's so overhyped, but you know what it's doing? It's making American history relevant, and I could not be more jazzed right now as we're heading over to dinner because that's what it's about. That's what it's about.